Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. Sometimes court cases read like mystery stories, sometimes they read like a fairy tale, and other times they read like horror stories. Let me tell you the fairy tale story of how Mr. Zayski overcame a wrongful liberty denial based on an alleged lack of objective basis for his doctor's restrictions and limitations. Look, one of the most common reasons the claims are denied is the argument that there's no objective basis for the restrictions and limitations assigned by the treating physician. Disability carriers will use forms called attending physician statement forms, and they're designed purposefully so they don't ask the right questions. That would lead a doctor to the conclusion that a policyholder is limited to sedentary work or less than sedentary work. Worse yet, Disability carriers like Liberty never ask about non-exertional impairments that are recognized in the Dictionary of Occupational Titles, which is used in most cases to determine whether or not you can work at your own occupation or any other occupation. So what is a non-exertional impairment? That can include the need to alternate sitting and standing. It's the impact of pain or stress on your ability to do your job functions. It's the side effects of medication whether you have good days or bad days, whether you would miss time from work uh, and how much work you would miss every week or every month, and whether or not you could maintain the pace and concentration required of your occupation. So Liberty doesn't ask those questions. In fact, they don't even ask the right questions about the mental and psychological problems you might have because they don't want to know the truth about your physical functioning, your mental functioning, uh, and your social behavior in the workplace. They just don't want to know. Now, if Liberty doesn't like what your doctor has said about your physical abilities, or they're looking for a way to justify a claims denial, Liberty's going to look at the Dictionary of Occupational Titles strength level of your occupation. Now, for example, if you're a uh, mechanical engineer, it might be uh, a sedentary job, but you spend a lot of time out in the field and it's actually performed at the medium level. What Liberty is going to do is they're going to look at the forms that your doctor has filled out and they're going to say, look, there's no objective basis for what your physician said about your functional capacity or your physician is relying on subjective complaints. So how does this play out? Let's talk about Mr. Zayski. And I think this is a perfect example of a Liberty Mutual claims denial on the basis that there's a lack of uh, objective reasons for the restrictions and limitations assigned. In the Zayski versus Liberty Assurance uh, case, um, what happened was that Zayski was a project manager and a system strategy risk manager. He observed and uh, dealt with uh, associate customer and supplier behavior around the world. He traveled extensively with consecutive or extended overnight stays. Unfortunately, he became disabled as a result of low back pain and radiculopathy was caused by spinal stenosis. He was prescribed opioids. He had a number of lumbar uh, nerve blocks, but unfortunately they didn't provide him with any pain relief. And as a result, his medication was increased. He applied for and was granted his long-term disability benefits for several months. And in that period of time, he had repeated injections. He was prescribed gabapentin, rabaxin, oxycodone. Uh, and unfortunately, none of those medications relieved his pain. All was good for him until Liberty decided it was time for a claims denial. And it employed its usual claims denial strategy. First up was a file review by the infamous Dr. Stuart Glassman, another well-known physician player in the disability carrier stable. Glassman made the usual attempt to speak to multiple treating physicians. When he was unable to speak with them, he opined that while there was evidence of lumbar disc degenerative disease and back pain, there was no evidence of a disc herniation. And I say, who cares? It's not the diagnosis that's the issue. Using spacious reasoning, he opined that Zayski could return to his own occupation and assign medium duty restrictions with no restrictions on sitting or driving. Now, obviously, that's outrageous. The gentleman can't sit. He can't drive. He has difficulty flying. Obviously, he could not perform his own occupation. And despite the repeated comments in the medical records about the side effects of medication, Glassman dismissed them. 
and unfortunately you shouldn't be surprised by this. Two weeks after the claims denial, Zayski underwent an MRI that revealed a moderately sized lumbar disc herniation. Now Liberty upheld the denial on appeal and submitted the updated medical records, including the MRI, to another Liberty peer review provider, Dr. Reeser, who said, okay, here's the herniated disc and I see the long-term narcotic use. But Reeser, who said that he could work, made no comment about the impact of medication side effects. He opined that Zayski could perform his own occupation with sitting and walking for one hour and standing for 30 minutes. Now, again, Liberty upheld the claims denial and a lawsuit was filed. Fortunately, Judge Brooks held that Liberty abused its discretion because Liberty's peer review physicians ignored objective medical evidence. There was the MRI that showed the herniated disc that they complained about that was missing before. They failed to appreciate that Zasek's condition had not improved over time. In fact, it had gotten worse. And Liberty didn't address how the uncontrolled pain impacted his ability to walk, sit, lift, or travel. They failed to address how he could perform his occupational duties in view of that pain. And they failed to re reconcile the conflicting opinions of their own peer review physicians. So what are the lessons learned in dealing with Liberty Mutual? Well, the first lesson is that well-documented medical records are the key. We need to be seeing your subjective complaints, physical examination findings, and diagnostic studies that correlate with those complaints. We need to see objective medical evidence. As I've said, diagnostic studies that confirm the diagnosis and correlate with the nature of your symptoms and complaints and difficulties. We need to make sure that the pain and the medication issues are vocationally addressed. What do I mean? I always have a vocational rehabilitation counselor take on the wrongful claims denial uh, based on the carrier's vocational opinions, which are generally wrong and based on the wrong restrictions and limitations. I want my VE to take on the uh, carrier's vocational evaluator's opinions and to not only address those opinions, but address the opinions uh, of our physicians and, and discuss what impact our treating physicians' opinions about restrictions and limitations have on my client's ability to function and perform their own occupation or any occupation. And attacking conflicting opinions of the peer review doctors is also key. We want to take their medical uh, opinions apart, line by line, issue by issue, opinion by opinion. Those are the tips that I have for Liberty Mutual policyholders and any other uh, disability carriers that you might be confronted with in your claim. Well, that's it for this episode. Please, if you like this podcast, consider liking our page, leaving a review, or sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, this podcast comes out weekly, so tune in next week for another insightful episode of Winning Isn't Easy.